Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about the Abbott decisions, which were a series of judicial decisions and subsequent legislative um, measures that were taken in New Jersey as a result of the Abbott v. Burke lawsuit, which was filed in 1991, I'm sorry, 1981 by the Education Law Center, the ELC, on behalf of the state's poorest districts. Now, New Jersey being one of the richest states, we actually had, at the time of the lawsuit, four of the nation's poorest cities right in our state. Uh, so in 1990, the state Supreme Court in New Jersey ruled in favor of uh, the plaintiffs, saying that funding had to be equalized across the districts. So in 91, the Quality Education Act was passed, uh, and it received a lot of opposition from the middle class, from the teachers' unions and the superintendents, many of which thought their schools outside of the Abbott districts would suffer while the urban schools improved. Little did they know that the way the bill was structured, most of the middle class schools would receive a good amount of income. So. Uh, they, was, they, they opposed it anyway, but the ELC reactivated the Abbott case in 1992 because of that disparity in the middle class schools receiving a lot of money. Um, so there were many subsequent rulings agreeing with the ELC and saying funding had not been equalized yet. Uh, but in 1998, most importantly, the Supreme Court ordered implementation of a plan for the state uh, that included provisions for the Abbott District schools for full day kindergarten, half day preschool for three and four year olds. Uh, many supplemental programs, and basically this was the first time this had been done, and it was um, it had quite an impact. The American Dream started to become a reality for the urban district schools. It wasn't perfect yet. Uh, in 2002, uh, the Abbott districts uh, still hadn't had their preschools fully uh, implemented. Nevertheless, um, New Jersey started to experience some economic troubles in about 2001, and um, Demographics were shifting in the state, but funding had kind of been locked in a two-tiered system, uh, Abbott districts and then everyone else. Uh, so in 2008, Governor Corzine enacted the, SCUN, the School Funding Reform Act that would erase the Abbott distinction and have formulas for providing additional resources to any districts with concentrations of disadvantaged students. The idea being that a lot of uh, uh, maybe poor uh, students lived in non-Abbott districts, as did students who did not speak English at home. 2009, the state Supreme Court decided this uh, act represented a thoughtful, progressive attempt to assist at-risk children throughout the state of New Jersey, not those who just resided in Abbott districts. And the formula they added represents our best hope. So that's where things stood at that point. Now, um, obviously there's some content area impl implications for me in the area of music. Uh, equal funding is always gonna be a higher priority than having a substantial or an adequate music education program. But I did some interviews uh, with a couple teachers in Newark and one in Patterson, and there are music education programs that exist in those, in those cities. In fact, Newark and Patterson have dedicated arts high schools and are magnet schools. Nevertheless, um, I think when times get tough, music can be cut, we all know this. So what do I, what, what can I do to, to maybe change the tide here a little bit? Well, I think I need to do a couple of things to make music more valuable. I think a music program would be more valuable to the students in the community and the parents. I want to do this a few ways. The classroom has to be an open setting in which the music of uh, people's cultures and personal lives are shared, appreciated, and studied. We don't want to just study the music of dead white guys. It needs to be relevant music, including maybe having a rock band uh, play music that uh, the children, the students, and the community are fans of. We need to also, number two, link the music program to the curriculum of all the other classes, as many as possible at least. Number three, we need to have charity concerts in public spaces outside the school, the proceeds of which will go to areas of the community that maybe have been disjointed from the school and bring them into the fold. The idea being we want the school to be a cultural hub around which the community revolves and make music an indispensable part of that. Maybe all this will serve to make music more valuable and um, it will diminish the willingness to cut music when times get rough. So, uh, due to the Abbott decision's constant litigation and constantly the constantly dynamic nature of school funding uh, legislation changes, I don't think we've seen the last of this uh, injustice, unfortunately. In fact, um, the ELC just recently stated the Office of Legislative Services found that the governor, that governor Christie's recent state aid proposal falls far below the levels required by the School Funding Reform Act. In May 2009, Abbott decision, I'm sorry, Abbott decision 20 said that um, the uh, SR, I'm sorry, the School Funding Reform Act must be fully funded. So, if it's not being fully funded, and it should be, we might have an issue here. So we might see some legislation or litigation in the near future, and hopefully things will 
continue to be on the up and up. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.